whenever the laws of any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. communication systems and swift methods of investigation employed by the highway patrol make armed robbery a risky, unprofitable undertaking for the average criminal. Within minutes, escape routes can be effectively covered by patrol units. However, early in March, Lorna and George Roker, along with Ed Beal, introduced a daring modus operandi in armed robbery. By impersonating a patrolman, the trio was able to deceive victims and delay investigation and pursuit by the highway patrol, giving them an advantage of several hours for their getaway. Shortly before noon on March 10th, they prepared for their next strike. In accordance with the plan, Lorna Roker had entered the loan company posing as a customer, while George Roker carefully checked the outside activity. Now I assume that you or your husband are employed. Oh yes, both of us. Roy and I work for Mitchell Industrial, but I'm going to have to quit in a few weeks. You see, there's going to be an addition to the family. Oh, I see. The holdup was time to the lunch hour when the office personnel would be out, leaving the manager alone. So that's why we're here. Now, how much of a loan would you require, Mrs. Ryan? Well, I don't know exactly. Excuse me. I'll be with you in just a moment, sir. It's all right. Well, what do you imagine would be a proper amount for a loan? Okay. Don't anybody get excited. Keep your hands down. Act natural and no one will get hurt. You. Go to the safe and put all the cash in the sack. Get going. Lady, just sit still and be quiet. Play it safe. Don't move till I'm out of here. Be careful. Don't worry. Maybe I can get his license number. just going by and I told him what happened. He went out the back, officer, but I couldn't see which way he went. Wait here. You'd better sit down, Mrs. Ryan. Thank you. No sign of him. This has been so upsetting. I wonder if I could go. Surely, but I'll have to have your name, please. Mrs. Warren Ryan. And where can we reach you? The phone is Evergreen 4531. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ryan. Uh, we'll call you. Your name, please? John Tembro. I'm the manager here. Now, that's spelled T-E-M-B-R-E-A-U. Uh, -E and uh, give me a description of the bandit. Well, he was about uh, six feet tall, 170, light hair, 35 to 40, and uh, wearing a gray suit. Good. How much did he get? I'll have to check. At, at least 2,000. Thank you very much. Uh, you'll be notified when to come down to headquarters and file a complete report. Thank you, officer.
me have that again, Sergeant. Where was the robbery? H.J. Lone Company? What time? Let's see, that was about five hours ago. We have no record of any patrolman reporting this. Okay, Sergeant, put Mr. Tremble on. Oh, Mr. Matthews, I've been waiting on the line to give you a, a simple little fact. All right, go ahead. Well, I just remembered something about that bandit I forgot to tell the officer. The man was wearing a... Look, may I interrupt? Well, we've had no report on the robbery until your office called. But I just gave a report to the officer. He took down all the information. Let me explain something. The man you thought was a highway patrolman, well, he's a suspect. What? We've had two cases like this in the past couple of weeks. Tell me, can you describe the guy that held you up? I certainly can. What about the fake highway patrolman? Can you describe him? Well, he was about medium height, and frankly, I didn't notice him particularly. Who called the officer in? A customer, a young woman. She ran out and she found an officer that... A woman? Describe her. Oh, I can give you her name. It's Mrs. Warren Ryan, and... I think I see why you want her description. All right, let's have it. Ed, you'd better lay low over the weekend. Monday morning, we'll hit the market. They'll have their weekend receipts plus their operating cash. That'll net us over a thousand. We'll move in right after the market opens at 8.30. Just at 8.30, Beale, you'll park the phony cop car a few yards south of the market and wait. This time, we'll have to change our MO a little just to keep the cops guessing. I go in and case the store. George, if I don't come out immediately, that's your signal that your job is set. Okay. You go in, take the cash, and beat it. Yeah. Then I call Beale, and he comes in and makes like a cop. Got it? Mm-hmm. I guess that covers it. Yes. Now, Ed, remember what we've gone over before. If George gets in a jam, you go in and pull a fake arrest. Then I'll go to George's car, and we'll all meet here. Is that clear? Mm-hmm. Oh, Beale! What's wrong? Who's going to take you for a cop if you show up in a uniform that looks like you've slept in it? Now I've got to iron it. These are pictures of criminals who impersonate officers. Can you identify any of them? Well, it's uh, a little hard to say. Yeah, I know the cap and uniform makes a great difference. No, I think this just might be the one, Mr. Matthews. Yes, in fact, I'm sure of it. Let me take a look here. Edward Beale, parole four years ago. About that woman, is there any doubt that she was in on it? I checked with the Mitchell factory. There's no Mr. and Mrs. Warren Ryan on the payroll. Tell me more about the patrol car. Well, like I said, it was black, had a white door, seal, or insignia. Looked just like any other patrol car to me. Well, thanks very much for your help. You're very welcome. Ex-convict Edward Beale waited to perform his role as a spurious highway patrolman. His description went out to actual highway patrol units throughout the state. Just act natural and you won't get hurt. Give me the dough. Get going. Just the bills. Come on, I want all of it. I emptied the register. Yeah, but you forgot the weekend receipts, remember? You take them to the bank every Monday morning. Now, just act natural. in 
trouble. The clerk jumped him. Hurry. Stay right where you are, mister, and don't you make a move. What's going on here? Oh, officer, he, he tried to hold me up. I got his gun away from him. I'll take that. I'm not used to handling those things. It's lucky for him you came along and saw what happened. All right, you on your feet. Headquarters will call you later on and tell you when to come in to file a formal report. Sure, officer. Thank, thanks a lot. Okay, you, let's go. Highway patrol, quick. I've just been robbed. No, no, an officer captured the bandit, all right. But he took the sack. The bandit had all my money in. Just had a phone call. One of our men supposed to have picked up the suspect at Barton's Market. Supposed to? Yeah, it seems the manager knocked him down, took his gun away, then a highway patrolman came in and arrested him. Not one unit's reported yet. Sounds like Beal and his pals. What made the manager suspicious? Couldn't find the money. It was about $1,500. Look, they got four roads out of town. Set up a roadblock on each one. Tell our men what to look for. I'm going to the market. Right. time in a series of four robberies, the highway patrol received a report within minutes that an armed bandit was impersonating an officer. From the market manager, descriptions were obtained of the bandit and the supposed patrol officer. Either one of these two could have been the phony cop, Mr. Matthews. Let's go from the top. How tall was he? See, I was so glad to see that uniform. I didn't notice details. Yeah, sure, I know. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, this is the one. I I'm positive now. Was there anybody else in the market when the robbery occurred? Well, I had just opened up. I, I had one customer. She came in and she went in the back and... In the excitement, I don't know what happened to her. What was the gal? Describe her. Well, she wasn't bad. She was brunette. About my height and about 28 years old, I guess. Why? They wanted the phony highway patrolman here before you phoned us. Oh, then you think that maybe she was the one who called this policeman? Well, they pulled three jobs in the same vicinity. Thanks very much for your help. Welcome. Honey, I got awful scared today. Why don't we quit while we're ahead, huh? The timetable calls for one more job. That's what we all agreed to, isn't it? Yeah. Besides, didn't our plan of operation take care of what happened today? You'll have a whole week to get your nerve back. My nerve's okay. What's with next week? So far, we've pulled jobs in the suburbs, one after the other. Now we go out on the highway. Still a report on Ed Beale. The DMV has no record of a vehicle registered to him. Well, we know they didn't get through the roadblock. At least Beale didn't. He could have. It's been nearly a week. And they haven't even tried to leave town. That means they're operating in a small area right around in here. Yeah, they haven't pulled anything for several days. Maybe they've called it quits. We haven't. Funny thing about that phony patrol car. Why it hasn't been spotted? That bothers me, too. It's going to be hard to outguess it. All right, let's let them outguess themselves. I've checked with the merchants in the area. They're going to cooperate whether a patrolman shows up or not. We'll cut down the bandit's time lead, all right, if the victim remembers. That's our gamble. In their most daring move yet, Lorna Roker had driven George to the next victim, a filling station operator. All right, mister, open the cash drawer. Come on, do as you're told. Just relax, sister, and no one will get hurt. Now the rest of it. That's all there is. This isn't Fort Knox. You'll think it's Fort Sumter if you don't stop the jokes. You got a whole week's take here. You want me to get it the hard way? I think he means it. You're right, sister. Yeah, that's 
better. I'm taking your car, lady. Now, both of you. Stand outside where I can see you till I drive off. Come on. Move. Be careful. Don't take any chance. Guess you're right. There's a patrol car. He took nearly a thousand dollars. And my car. He was a hitchhiker. He picked he up. He turned right down Highway 29, officer, headed south. Get in, lady. You can identify your car. I'll call you later. Yes, sir. The said the suspect took off south on 29 with a car he supposedly stole from a woman. She flagged down a highway patrol car, got in with the patrolman, took after the suspect. Sounds like that phony patrol car again. No one's called in about it. Yeah, but the attendant also said he saw both cars turn south on 29. This means they're headed for 42. We can get a unit there in about, oh, I'd say five minutes. That's long before they'll get there. Looks like we got them. They have another choice. Take a look right here. This is Forest Road. They can go west on this. Better take them back to Highway 15 toward town. That's what they're trying to do, I think, get back to town. If we can put a roadblock here at 42, it'll cut them off if they keep going south. Well, we can get to Forest Road in about 20 minutes. Let's do that. Take an undercover car so they won't be suspicious. Twenty-one fifty to 1410. Watch your 1020. 1410. I'm on Highway 29, two miles north of intersection 29 and 42. No contact. Continue north on 29 to Forest Road. Take cover at that 1020. Report any suspect vehicle before proceeding. 10-4? 10-4. Uh, let's take a look now. We're about a half mile from Forest Road. 1440 is covering the other end. Then the suspects are either on Forest Road or still on 29 between the filling station and North's stakeout. Let's take Forest Road and see if we can find a place narrow enough to block a car. Car coming back down the road. Is it a patrol car? I don't know. What difference does it make? Well, this is it, Forest Road. There's got to be some place down there you can hide out. can do now is wait. 1410 to 2150. 2150 by. Patrol unit proceeding south down 29. Just turn west on Forest Road. Well, you're the only unit in the area. How many people in the car? From this 1020, I can only see the driver in a patrol uniform. But you follow suspect. Keep it a safe distance. 10-4. Well, at least we know Beale's headed this way. Yeah, you better take cover right now. You'll 
have to get out of that outfit later. Turn off in a side road when you get to the highway. Come on, get going. Okay, Lorna. by. Suspect vehicles made contact a quarter of a mile from my 1020. Suspect impersonating patrolman now proceeding north on Forest Road towards your 1020. Woman suspect and second male suspect now following in a convertible. Keep convertible inside. 10-4. Beal should be along any minute. Don't do anything like call you. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters by. Notify all units not to contact me. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four? Ten four. Brother, am I glad to see you? Look, mister, I'm on an emergency call. Well, I thought maybe you could give me a the little... The best I can do is shove your head a few feet so I can get by. That's all you can do, huh? Look, I'm in a hurry. I tell you, I'll radio headquarters for a tow truck. Well, when you talk to him, tell him it's for Matthews. Matthews, okay. Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. Come on, get out of the car with your hands up. Move. Push me a belt. Drop it. All right, Sergeant. Put your hands on top of your head. Check him. Beal. Now what are we going to do? Turn around and go back. They've got us blocked. Let's get out of here. Put your hands on top of your head. All right, hold it a second. Well, what do you know? The guy at the gas station is going to make it to the bank with this after all. Take him out of here. This week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week.